Dear viewers, welcome to today's episode. Today we are looking at question 9 from the 2021 GCE Mathematics Paper 2. This is our ninth episode where we've done 8 questions so far and this is the ninth question from the paper of interest. So question 9 is from statistics and the question leads the following table shows the results obtained by 60 learners in a mathematics test. So we have a table there, the max code. The max code are given uh, in ranges. So we have uh, from 0 to 10, 10 to 20, then 20 to 30, all the way up to 70 to 80 in the ranges of 10, 10. Okay. Then we also have the number of learners who scored uh, of uh, whose scores fell in that interval okay then question a is asking us calculate the standard deviation so standard deviation is basically given by we shall call it s standard deviation s is given by uh, the square root of the variance which is s square okay so what it means is when we are talking about uh, standard deviation we are saying our spread is our data set how far are the scores in this case are they apart so the bigger the standard deviation the more spread they are so meaning the intervals within is high for example the lowest and the highest could be a significantly different so the smaller the number the better it is in terms of our data distribution then for us to find this standard deviation which is also stand, in most cases is known as SD. We need to find the variance. So the variance is given by a summation of x square. Now what is x square? So like for example, the first one we are saying uh, the score that a student obtained uh, uh, was within zero and ten. And how many are those? Two students scored within between 0 and 10 within that interval. So for, for us to get a number that fell in that region uh, or an average score, we get the middle point. So we say 10 plus 0, we get 10 divided by 2, a 5. So this x square is that 5. Similarly, on the second one, it will be 10 plus 20 divided by 2, which is basically 15. So 15 would be our observation. Then we square that and multiply by the corresponding frequencies, which is this. Then divide by the sum of all observation. In this case, we are told there are 60. So if you add 2 plus 6 plus 10 all the way up to the last one, you get a 60. Then you take out the mean. So mean is given by x bar. So x bar is given by summation of all observation multiplied by frequency in this case then divide by by the total number of observation so once you find the square of the observation multiplied by the frequency then divide by the number of observation then you take the mean square you get the variance and you find the square root of the variance then you get what you're looking for the standard deviation so the first thing that we need to do is we need to find the mean so in this case to find the mean we know what this is this is 60 from here then we need to find the, uh, the observation multiplied by the frequency so in this case we start with summation of observation multiplied by f is equal to in this case the first one will be 10 plus 0 divided by 2 5 so it will be 5 multiplied by 2 then we had go to the next one 10 plus 20 is 30 divided by 2 15 so we have a 15 here then multiply by 6 then we go 20 plus 30 50 divided by 2 which is 25 so it will be 25 multiplied by 10 then we need to do for all, all of them until the last one which will be 70 plus 80 divided by 2 which will be 75 multiplied by 3 once we do that once we sum all of them we are going to get uh basically remember a calculator is allowed in paper two so you enter this in the calculator you're going to find basically two thousand 
340. Okay, that's what we are going to get. Then, having obtained that, then we can proceed to finding the mean. Okay, by saying this 2340, you divide it by when you add 2 plus 6 plus 10 plus 15 plus 12 plus 8 plus 4 plus 3, you get 60, which is the same as the number which is given to you here. So, divide by 60 you end up with basically 39 exactly so so 39 was the mean score so 39 was the average score so the most representative central number of all the observation when we weight all the other scores we get 39 on average so this is the first step so having found that what we need to do now is we know what this is we know what this is then we need to find this so how do you find this so in this case, when you're finding this, what you do is, remember for the mean, this one, we are just multiplying by the mid value. Then in this one, you maintain the same, the frequencies, but you square these numbers. That's what it means. That's what it means. So let us go up, proceed to go and find this. So when we start summing this, you are going to have summation of x squared multiplied by f. So the first one will be a uh, 5 square multiplied by 2 then plus the second one which is this one to be 15 square multiplied by 6 you've seen the difference in the when you're finding the mean we're not squaring the observation which is the mid value in this case we are squaring so we go to this one just to emphasize so we have 20 plus 30 50 divided by 2 25 so that's 25 you square it multiplied by the observation then you do the same for all of them until the last one, which is in this case 75 square multiplied by 3. Once you do that, you use your calculator. Calculator is allowed, you sum. You end up with 108,300 uh, as your. Then once you get that, once you get that, then you can proceed to finding the variance. Okay, you can proceed to finding the variance. Which I'll write here the valence is uh, s square is equal to then we know the summation here. We know this summation square, we know what it is, we found it. It's basically this number which is 108,300, uh, then divided by, then we have 60. Remember, there are 60 observations here, 60 learners, then we take out 39 square which is the mean we calculated the uh, area which is this one once we get that you use your calculator so remember calculators are allowed to just emphasize then when you do that you're going to find basically uh, s square it will be basically 284 okay 284 exactly then you find the square root introducing the square root both sides Okay, you are going to introduce a square root, the square root, then you are going to find a positive number because standard deviation is a positive number and it will be 16.85, which you uh, end up with to three significant figures 16.9. So 3.9 is basically the spread of the average spread of the scores. Okay, so that's how you get. Uh, the standard D deviation then you would have this six marks okay let us go to B so B answer this part of the question on a sheet of graph paper using the table above copy and complete the cumulative frequency table below okay so we are required to complete this cumulative frequency table below so the first thing is to understand what is going on here. So what is happening here is uh, we are starting with zero. Is there anybody who scored below zero? No, no one from here because we've seen the interval here. So that's why we have this zero. So now we go, how many scored below 10? There were two. That's it, these two. So we go to this one. How many scored below 20? 20 or below. There were six plus two, which is eight. Similarly, how many scored uh 30 or below so it was 10 plus 6 plus 2 which is 18 this is the 18 so we are doing that all the way then when you come to this one so that we, 
we populate so we are saying how many scored 60 or less so we know those who scored 50 or less they were 45 then those who scored between 50 and 60 they were 8 so it will be 8 plus 45 we get basically 8 plus 45 we get 53 so this is 53 okay there 53 then we go to the next one so the next one how many scored 70 or below 70 or below so how many scored 60 between 60 and 70 there were four plus those who scored below 60 or below they were 53 so 53 plus 4 we have 57 okay 57 then we go to the last one how many scored 80 or below all of them okay all of them scored 80 or below and so we are going to say 3 plus 57 we get 60 so 60 is exactly the number that will be given there so basically this is how you deal with this kind of a question so let us go to now uh roman numero 3 of question b using a scale of two centimeters to represent 10 units on both axes for x is greater or equal to zero but less or equal to 80 and y is greater or equal to zero but less or equal to 60 draw a smooth cumulative frequency curve and that's three marks okay so that one let us just go to the graph paper so we have this graph paper that where we are going to to do so i've already labeled it x and uh y so that it's easier for us to deal with it so let us just center it properly then we've already found that what we've already found this is basically a 60 we have 57 then we have 53 here then so we can proceed to plot so what you need to know is what you need to bear in mind is this is the two centimeter then this is two centimeter so for every two centimeter we are putting 10 units so that's what you have done there so you'll be given a standard graph paper like this one for you to use in an exam so we are saying how many scored less or equal to zero is zero so we are starting from here okay let me use the black color we are from here then how many scored 10 or less there were two so two so 2 is 10, 2 is, remember these, there are 10 boxes, so 2 is just 2. So each, each unit measures 1 unit. So 2 is just 2 somewhere here. Okay. Okay, then, how many scored 20 or, or less? There were 8. So 8 is close to 10, so it's somewhere here. Then, how many scored less? 30 or less there were 18 so 18 is just below 20 somewhere two points below 20 there like this then how many scored uh 40 or less so 40 or less let me just zoom in so that you're able to see properly 40 or less so 40 or less what you know is 40 or less there were 33 so we come to 40, then or less, there were how many? 30, 33, 1, 2, 3, so it's somewhere here. 33. Then 50 or less. So 50 max or less, they were 45. So we come to 45, so 45 is just halfway here. Okay. How many scored less, 60 or less? 60 or less, they were uh, 53. So 53 is just slightly above here one two three somewhere here how many scored 70 or less they were 57 so 57 is just somewhere here 57 then uh 80 or less they were exactly uh 60 here then once you do that then you can uh roughly roughly nicely join this to make a curve to make it uh, that curve that we need to draw smooth curve so nicely just try to sketch this one nicely so it will be like this like this then you sketch until it reaches there 
So this is how the graph will do a uh, look. So once you do that, then we can proceed to answer the other question. So question E, so that's how you, you do this one, you get the three marks. So that's get the, the last two marks. Showing your method clearly, use your graph to estimate the in, inter quartile range. Interquartile range. So interquartile range, which is basically IQR is given by the third quartile, which is basically the 75th percentile divide minus the 20 this the first quarter which is the, the the first 25 25th percentile which is the first quarter that difference is what is the interquartile range so we know that uh basically uh the third quarter is uh third third quarter which is three out of four so we're finding q3 Okay, which is 75 percent multiplied by. So in this case, on the y-axis we are from zero to 60. So we are multiplying by 60 to find the 75th percentile, 75th or 75th percentile. We are getting basically a uh, a 45. Okay, so we are getting basically a 45. So once we get a 45, which is the number. So once you get a 45, then you come and a check on, remember the mark is X, okay? The mark is X, then we are finding the, 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 the mark, which is X, using Y. So you come to 45. So where is 45? So 45 is somewhere half here, okay? Somewhere half here. So you're going to draw... At 45 exactly, you are going to draw this line until it touches there. Then you come down here and read down here. We should be exactly somewhere at 50. Okay, so we know that now Q3 intercontinental range in this case will be the 50 max. That's where the 75th. 75th uh quantile is 50 max that's the first one then we go to the 25th okay or the first quarter 25th so we do similarly so it will be basically uh in this case it will be q1 is equal to one out of four multiplied by uh 60 we end up with 15. Okay, we end up with 15. So we go on the graph and look for 15. So 15 is somewhere in half between 20 and 10, 10 and 20, then you are going to draw a, a sketch. Okay, so we're going to draw a sketch somewhere here and you reach somewhere there. You see? So it will come down there, come somewhere there. We should be lovely about 28. So lovely 28. So having found that, then you can find interquantile range as basically, which is Q3 minus Q1, the third quarter minus the second quarter. In this case, it will be 50 minus 28. Then we end up with 20, 22. So 22 is the interquartile range. So if we are being asked to find, the, the other question that they would ask you is to find the same quartile range. So instead, you multiply this interquartile range by half. Okay, so you're saying the middle of the interquartile range. So basically, this is how you answer the question on a statistic to get the full 12 marks. Thank you for joining me. Join me as I look at question 10 of uh, this paper.